Life is unfair, make the most out of it. As the saying goes every cloud has a silver lining but I did not always have such a positive outlook towards life. Having an autistic son has impacted me greatly and totally changed my attitude and outlook towards life. Before you continue, please subscribe to my channel so that you will not miss another video. When my eldest son Jonathan was born in 1990, he was a normal and healthy baby. In the first five years, he met all the developmental milestones. In fact, he was a bright and intelligent child and was bilingual and he could speak both Mandarin and English. Both my wife Rosalind and I are not sure what happened and what triggered but Jonathan started regressing in 1995 and by the end of the year, he had lost his speech and was chanting. In desperation, Rosalind and I went around seeking whatever medical advice and help we could. We bought Jonathan for a hearing test in Kuala Lumpur, the capital city of Malaysia. We are based in Kuching, where medical facilities are very much lacking compared to Kuala Lumpur. While in Kuala Lumpur, Jonathan was referred to Dr. Rose Peng, a child psychologist who diagnosed Jonathan as having late onset of autism. Our lives were shattered. We felt that we had lost our son who had been developing normally for the first five years of his life. Late onset of autism is not common compared to autism which can be detected in babies. Most of the parents that we talked to, realized that something was wrong with their child even at a very early stage, most even as early as a baby. The questions that screamed in my head were why me? What had I done to deserve this? Jonathan has been developing normally for the first five years, why God, he had to be autistic this late? Why is life so unfair? At this point in time, there was a lot of negativity, resentment, frustration, and unhappiness in my life. I just felt helpless, hopeless and overwhelmed by the whole situation. What I can do for Jonathan, how I can help Jonathan, I often wondered. I was in despair and full of self-pity for some time until I witnessed this incident at the nursery. Since both Rosalind and I were both working, we had to send Jonathan to the nursery. I had arrived earlier at nursery and what I saw broke my heart. There was Jonathan lying on the floor, and two or three kids were pulling his legs and hands dragging him up and down the floor. What shocked me the most was that Jonathan was just lying there, allowing the kids to drag him up and down the floor. Why wasn't he resisting or putting up a struggle so that the kids would stop disturbing him? I asked myself. It later dawned on me that I was just like Jonathan. By feeling so helpless and hopeless, I too am being dragged up and down by the circumstances of my life. And like Jonathan, I just let the circumstances of my life drag me in whatever direction. I started to find out more about autism and treatment options from the internet. The more that I read, the more that I found out that there was so much that I can do for Jonathan. We also got in touch with two other parents, both husbands and wives, of autistic kids who were also from Kuching. Later we set up the Sarawak Autistic Association with my wife Rosalind as the founding president and me as the founding vice president and the remaining four as founding secretary and assistant secretary, and treasurer and assistant treasurer respectively. Even as the association was being registered, the six of us used our own money to hire a teacher Mina, who was previously Jonathan's kindergarten teacher, whom we sent for training in Kuala Lumpur and to teach our kids. Mina became the first teacher of the Sarawak Autistic Association Resource and Educational Center. Today, the association which was later renamed Kuching Autistic Association has its own buildings and more than 100 students are benefiting from various therapies provided by the center. My son Jonathan is still going to the center where he is learning vocational and self-help skills. Yes, life is sometimes unfair but I can't just put the blame on my circumstances and then do nothing about it. The most important lesson that I learned is that I can't control what life throws at me but I can choose to respond in a manner that empowers me. 
conclusion life is unfair. This is a fact of life and of the universe. We have to accept the fact that sometimes bad things do happen to good people. When we complain that life is unfair, we have the misconception that somehow life is supposed to be fair. Some people are so obsessed by the feeling that life is unfair that they never get around to asking themselves what's actually going on right now, or what they can do about it, or if anything they can do about it is worth doing. We all spend time brooding about how things ought to be instead of making plans about how things can be. But whenever we're tempted to waste time like that, we should ask ourselves whether there are any actions that we can take to rectify. The question isn't whether life is fair, but how we can respond to it. Whatever circumstances that we are in, there are opportunities that are available to us to improve our situation. While we do not have control over what life throws at us, we have total control over how we choose to respond to life's circumstances. It is up to us to make the best out of the circumstances we are in and to move forward. In this way, we are no longer victims of these circumstances but victors emerging stronger and better from the challenges and difficulties. Thank you for watching. I would appreciate it very much if you guys can give this video a thumbs up. My name is Charles and I am trying to spread positivity over the internet, one motivational video at a time. Please help me in my mission to spread positivity by sharing this video with your friends and family.